just a minute. <laughs> Good morning ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Creator on Wheels. I am Shiv and hope you guys are doing happy and healthy. First of all, thank you so much for all the encouragement and the engagement on the previous video. The video in which I kind of went on and on discussing about uh, why I picked up a classic bike again and why specifically this bike, the Honda CB350 Highness. I never <laughs> expected that a lot of people would be searching or bumping into a video which is all about why should you buy a Honda CB350, the Highness or the RS. But what did surprise me was I hardly found any Java fanboys commenting on it, whether good or bad. It's okay if they don't, but still I was expecting at least one or two guys to pop up and uh, say a few things and vanish off, like they always do in the Facebook or the WhatsApp group. Having said that, um, I am still in touch with few of my uh, Java friends and uh, one of them in fact uh, messaged me uh, the other day when I made the video live. and. He told me like, so you finally sold off your Java. I told like, yeah, because if I'm right, I think he was the only person who knew that I was planning to do that. And yeah, I'm glad that I got someone, uh, I would probably say like uh, responsible and sensible who picked up the bike. Uh, like I said in my previous video, I never had any issues with my bike, uh, but just that the connect was not happening that is what uh, bothered me from keeping the bike but this person uh, is a is an official uh, he's a working professional and he was specifically looking at java for some reason and he told that he had got offers for a lot of uh, re bikes new and old but he was specifically looking for java and what pulled him towards my bike was all the numerous accessories that I had already put and I was selling it as it is. I didn't want it to remove the aux light or didn't want it to remove the handlebars which I had put comfort handlebars in. So he's pretty happy. Uh, he initially told he'll try to do touring but uh, he's a busy guy, he's a central government employee. So, I do know that he is using it regularly for his office commute and things like that. He keeps posting about it. Uh, coming back to the point, I spoke a lot of things about uh, the CB350 Highness, why I picked it up. And a lot of them, uh, in fact, pointed out about the negatives. And let me admit that I am aware or I was and I am aware of all the negatives. Uh, which are there for this bike and um, some I can live with some there is no option but um, not something like what was the situation with me with my previous bike uh, probably I'll just pick up a few of them and explain about it um, there are few uh, okay let's take the price point of view itself um, Honda CB350 is in this segment, a slightly expensive bike. Um, for a slightly lower price, you definitely get a lot of other options. Um, and in fact, the Java 42 that I had got, uh, which was, I would call it as like the 1.1 version <laughs> with the dual channel ABS, I had paid around 2.15 lakhs on road when I uh, uh, picked up that bike. And that was without any accessories. So I. At one point in my life, I actually lost uh, count and track of uh, what all accessories that I had put and how much I had spent on it. So keep the accessories side aside, accessories part aside. But um, the bike wise, I think I had paid about 2.15 lakh on road. So this particular bike, uh, the CB350, costs around uh, 2.5 if I'm right, 
for the regular version the deluxe or deluxe pro one of those but this specific one is anniversary edition so there are only two colors in anniversary edition the green and the black and this one either of the color this one cost you 2.61 lakhs on road in bangalore let me be very specific this is in bangalore so if you're okay with this price then you're okay with this price anywhere in india because apparently karnataka has the highest road tax and all those things so it will be the most expensive to buy it here than any other place in india so in bangalore on road it costs about 2.61 lakhs and the accessories are all extra they don't give anything luckily the side stand comes uh, along with this so there isn't much about uh, expendi uh, expenditure regarding that type of things but um, i did pick up a few things in the showroom itself and there is a reason for it and i'm pretty sure all the uh, honda cb350 highness and rs uh, owners will uh, acknowledge by it that uh, the accessories that is available in the honda is pretty comprehensive and most importantly it's very affordable and i was actually surprised like um, several months before i bought this bike itself i had started doing the research and the prices were like really really good i'll just give a very um, random example like the pannier stay that i have on this bike i had i paid about 710 rupees so i think it's 600 not plus the gst and all it comes to 710 rupees and that's for the large version there is a small version also which is um, slightly less i think it will be 500 or 600 rupees but a pannier stay good sturdy good quality pannier stay from the company cost you 700 rupees and a similar one if you had to pick up from any third party companies so many of them are available on the market and if you want to get it custom done like what i had got, got it done on the java also it costs you in upwards of 2000 or maybe in upwards of 2500 some companies sell it for like 335 also but these those are proper pannier uh, stays not really a saddle stay but this is i, I would this is not a pannier stay this is like they call it as a pannier stay type b but this is actually a saddle stay this serves a purpose not that i wanted to put boxes or anything but this serves a purpose so where is 2500 and where is uh, 700 rupees and having said that the quality is good i'm not telling you the quality is not good the quality is actually very good the most of the things are available in the showroom itself um, two types of uh, engine guard or crash guard um, you have bash plate and uh, you have the spanier stay back uh, split seat option all those things are available in the uh, showroom itself uh, the anniversary edition by default comes with a split seat so i need not have to spend another 3500 to get the uh, split seat instead of the single seat those are all the like the difference that you pay the 56000 gets covered up here that's what i felt so the accessories wise also you are so the accessories wise also you are pretty covered okay so i i didn't have to spend too much uh, outside uh, so even with accessories uh, i am okay with this price compared to whatever i paid for my bike or the other bikes which are there and then you accessorize it be it a java be it a meteor or be it a himalayan or whatever it is it will come to this price only okay um, here also i'm accessorizing it but the cost remains in remains in control but um, th that's what i would say one thing is the cost which uh, yeah everyone knows i mean anyone who talk, wants to talk about the cb500x or any bike in fact in, from the honda uh, kitty and they know that hondas are priced slightly expensive but uh, surprisingly nobody was talking about the cb350 highness or rs being too expensive i mean it's not in excess of 3 lakhs otherwise i would have definitely not bought it myself 
Okay, now the second key thing that is the mechanical stuff, which everyone who's who's tried it and who has not bought it has a concern. That is this gearing. Okay, I see one more CV three fifty highness in front of me. Yeah. There are two things here. One is a taller gearing. Okay, this bike has taller gearing. Uh -huh. Considering that I had come from Java, even during the test drive or after picking up the bike, I did have my own challenges getting used to it. Because this is the whole mindset thing. Like you should know that you are now riding a taller gearing bike and what is its uh, pros and cons and all this stuff. This is not meant to be like. Uh, we just keep dropping gears and go fast. It's it's not like that. Maybe on a highway, it will be easy for you to do, but definitely not within the city situations like this. So it takes a little bit of time, and I'll be very honest with uh, you guys that I'm still getting used to it. Okay, there are at times wherein I'm I'm just like wondering what's happening, and I'm like, okay, it's it's not shifted yet, but. That doesn't bother me because my mind is now said that okay, this bike is different, the gearing on this bike is different, so I am mentally prepared for it, so I'm okay with it. The other issue on the mechanical part itself is its uh, fifth gear <laughs> uh, or the lack of it. So this this bike is uh, five gears and. Uh, stop here so this this bike has like uh, five gears but the fifth one is almost like an overdrive there's hardly anything that you can do in fifth gear uh, in fact like one of the uh, first few rides that i went uh, when i went in highway i realized that you gain a certain momentum or a speed in fourth and if you're in a flat road and if you try to shift to fifth it will not add anything you will not go fast Maybe a situation you can actually come down slow, but you can never go faster than that. So you need to use fifth gear only if you really need it. So any top speed that you want to do, any going fast you want to do, you have to do it in the fourth gear itself. So it's literally four gears, and within the city, it's as good as telling it's three gears because um, maybe since the last 1,000 kilometers, I would say I'd have probably ridden about. Uh, without exaggeration about like 50 kilometers within city in the fourth gear apart from that it's always one two three one two three like that and highways has been four and when i really want five but it does not make a difference at all so that also you need to be mentally prepared so if you really want to overtake someone when you're in the highway you have to drop the gear rather than expecting to go overtake. and this is meant to be kind of like a chill out cruise kind of a bike so it's not something which you will be ripping in like 120, 140 kind of a speed. So again, I was okay with that. But the best part of it when you compare it with Java is that the Java vibration kicked in at around 80 itself. So with the Java, you have to be very, very precise on at what RPM you're changing your gear and what speed and what RPM you're maintaining. If there is even a slight mismatch, you can start feeling the vibration in the handlebar and the foot peg immediately. Okay, and it is a very, very evident uh, vibration. And it's not always in all situations that you're able to drive at a, a specific RPM and a specific speed. It's not possible at all. So eventually it ends up being like you are riding a Java on highway the vibration is a part of you and the vibration feels like as if like you're sitting on something which is supposed to give you no let, let me not talk about it i have done a few rides on this now like just outside the city and one slightly long i would not say long but slightly long but it's like 400 kilometer trip and 80s like it's as good as riding in the city in second or th third gear you hardly feel any vibration at all i i've done about 110 max on this one but that was before the first service so 
I was a little bit uh, uh, apprehensive about pushing it a little bit further, but that was on the fourth gear. But I did not feel any vibration at all, and that's like in a brand new bike, which has not done uh, the first service yet. And I know what are the limitations, what I should do, what I should not do with a new bike, especially in the break-in period and all. So that was just a like small stretch, but I maintained a cruising speed between 80 and 90, and I did not feel any vibration at all. Like even after you ride for like two hours continuously, you stop. You can feel it in your hand, like that tingling or numb, situ- numb kind of a feeling that you get. That I did not get in this way, but in Java it was pretty evident. Anyway, going back to what I was telling is regarding this uh, the gearing. So I, I was, I am mentally prepared. I was aware of it, and I am mentally prepared about the gearing and this fifth gear thing. So that doesn't bother me much. For me, what is important is the drive quality. Okay, the refinement and all. And I'm very happy to say that this bike gives it. And in fact, like um, I, I am in touch with quite a few folks who have been riding uh, CP350 Highness for more than a year now, and who are in fact experimenting with uh, engine oils and things like that. And they in fact like have the tried and got a confirmation that there are specific engine oils which makes the uh, the ride quality even better. First of all, it's good, and it makes it even better. Uh, that's what I've been hearing. So that's about the right quality. The price and the right quality are a couple of things. Okay. And uh, the riding posture, ground clearance and all. Um, the riding posture, again, it depends on what you took in a Java. If it was Java 42, it was slightly, slightly like the wider handlebars, 40, I would say, not really, but like really sporty. And again, if you wanted to comfort, you have to put uh, handlebar razors or uh, use one of those para handles or out of motorcycle handles. Just a minute. <laughs> so, handlebar thing wise, this is very comfortable. I have, in fact, installed the uh, handlebar razors for this one, the carbon racing ones. Uh, it's, it's comfortable. I, I didn't want it to do anything. I didn't want it to change the handlebar. Again, I mentioned in the previous video, I want to keep the mods on it as minimal as possible. And when I say mods, it's not about accessorizing. It's about uh, putting things on it which is not related to it or which will make it slightly out of place. And that's something which I repent, which I'm guilty of doing it on the Java. Okay. So the sitting position wise and all is fine. Uh, but the third thing, which people ask me, which I, that was one of the key thing for me when I was test riding this was the ground clearance. Java literally has no ground clearance. <laughs> you, I, you take it however you want, but Java literally has no ground clearance. I have not ridden that, uh, the latest version, the, what do you call this, the Roadster and the Scrambler and all, where they seems to have negated it a little bit, but, um, the 2.1 or the one which I had, no, I, it's, for a person like me who is slightly hefty, um, even the simple, of the simple uh, speed breaker or a pothole, it will scrape. The, I don't know if it's a design issue or whatever, but uh, I had done quite a few things on the bike which suppressed it to a certain extent when I'm riding, but when you're doing it, when you're riding with a pillion, uh, in my case, um, I used to uh, drop my kid to the school, so like three of us used to go in the morning. It's like hardly a one kilometer ride, but you have to be extra cautious. You have to be over cautious, especially when you're going on a speed breaker. See, like example, what is there here? There is a speed breaker. There is power portal on the other side also. This used to scrape. For sure, it used to scrape. For a person of my weight and uh, amount of compression that used to happen on the um, suspension and all java used to scrape but this has zero at least for me uh, it has never given me any ground clearance issue either when i'm riding alone or when i'm riding with my family i have tried it on quite a few bumpy roads when i was doing the test ride and i have uh, uh, written it in the city in the place where uh, the roads are pretty bad uh, with my wife again um, with two up till now the last 
6,000 kilometer plus. Not even once I have had this ground clearance issue. Not even once. <laughs> but the Java bike, I don't know if I mentioned it in any of the previous videos. The very first day when I picked up the bike um, during a Diwali evening, I took the bike from the showroom, I took the keys and I came down off the ramp and it scraped. So that's how bad that was. But um, yeah, ground clearance issue is not there. And I can give you a very bold statement that if I am not having a ground clearance issue, I'm pretty sure most people won't have. <laughs> because I don't think so. People will be in excess of whatever weight I am <laughs> correctly. Um, in fact, like in a not so funny context, I was once uh, riding on the uh, Hosur road, uh, Hosur to Krishnagiri, um, and this was on a Sunday morning, and I did see a fellow uh, CP350 Highness rider who was overweight. Uh, with all due respect to him, like yeah, he was overweight, but. I was mainly looking at his bike, his suspension, his tires, his ground clearers and all. And for quite a long part uh, in our um, journey, we were pretty like in a, in a um, maintainable distance between each other. And I could see that he never had any issues. He, he either in the um, speed breakers or anywhere, he did not have any issues and he was riding it very comfortably. So, ground clearance is not an issue at all, um, I can confidently say. My suspension setup is on level 2, which is the way the company gives it, so no issues there as well. So, those were the three points which I wanted to highlight and speak about. I know, once again, it's a very lengthy video, but um, the three things that I wanted to talk about, I hope it answered all the things, which is uh, the pricing. Uh, and the uh, mechanical part which is the tall gearing and uh, fifth gear being an overdrive and third one being the ground clearance and i hope i have answered that and if it has helped you in any way um, i'm very grateful for that uh, but if you still have any questions regarding the cb350 highness or rs please feel free to comment below i will be more than happy to answer that i do know that i have to answer one more question related to insurance the options that uh, big big honda gives i will do a separate video about it that's it for this video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye bye